and welcome back to India Business Insights. In the early years, post-Indian independence, a few infrastructure projects were launched, often with overseas assistance. These included hydro power projects, steel plants, and some elite educational institutions. While the merits of constructing new hydro projects, environmental impact, etc., could be open for debate, the fact is that all of these projects continue to have a very strong positive impact on Indian economy. These projects have been transformative for the economy from agriculture in Punjab and other northern states, laying the foundations for the industrial base and of course the famed IITs and medical colleges making their contributions. These large scale projects, while extremely difficult to implement, create a huge impact over a large area and population. However, with very large investments, risk with such scale concerns about environmental impact, we did not take up such huge projects for decades. We had also faced challenges from cost and time overruns and poor project management skills. India today has significantly better project management skills, much larger availability of finances and thorough evaluation of environmental and social impact. This has given the government of the day taking up more and more ambitious infrastructure projects. The union government has built infrastructure at a historically unprecedented rate and it has taken the overall public sector capital investment from Rs 5.6 lakh CR in FY15 to Rs 18.6 lakh CR in FY24 as per budget estimates. Poised to become a $5 trillion economy with a projected 6-7% growth rate, with the global economy still struggling with supply chain disruptions post-COVID. Today, we will look at some of the key mega infrastructure projects in India. Mumbai Trans Harbour Link The Mumbai Trans Harbour Link MTHL is a massive infrastructure project currently under construction. This 21.8 km road bridge will connect the bustling city of Mumbai with its satellite city Navi Mumbai. Once completed, it will be the longest sea bridge in India. The MDHL will provide faster connectivity to key locations, including the upcoming Navi Mumbai International Airport, the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust JNPT Port, the Mumbai Pune Expressway, and the Mumbai Goa Highway. This bridge is set to revolutionize travel and transportation in the region. Bullet Train Aiming to complete India's first bullet train project between Mumbai and Ahmedabad by 2026, the National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited NHSRCL, is adopting homegrown technological solutions in line with the Make in India vision. The project incorporates mechanized track installation machinery and will implement the JSLAP track system moduled after the Japanese Shinkansen. This venture offers several benefits such as time efficiency, eco-friendliness, reduced road congestion, economic growth, improved comfort and safety, a boost to the Make in India campaign and positive impact on the real estate market. Bharat Mala Project Another noteworthy mega project in India is the Bharat Mala project. This ambitious plan aims to develop and construct tunnels, roadways, elevated corridors, flyovers, interchanges, bypasses, overpasses, and more to improve the efficiency of the national corridor. This includes enhancing the golden quadrilateral and the north-south and east-west corridors. According to the recent reports, phase one of the Bharat Mala project is expected to be completed by the end of 2026. The total cost of the project has now risen to Indian rupee 8.5 lakh CR. This project will create 50 national corridors, which will help reduce freight traffic congestion and ensure smoother and faster movement of goods on national highways. Chenab Railway Bridge this iconic arch bridge is part of a massive project to connect the Kashmir Valley to the main rail network of Indian Railways. Standing at an astonishing 
359 meter above the Chenab River Valley. It's not only the world's highest railway bridge, but also a testament to human ingenuity. Located between Bakal and Kauri in the Riyasi district of Jammu Division in Jammu and Kashmir, India, the Chenab Rail Bridge was fully completed and inaugurated in August 2022. Here's a quick timeline. The base support were completed by November 2017, paving the way for the construction of the main arch. By April 2021, the magnificent arch was finished and the entire bridge was completed by August 2022. While it was initially expected to open to rail traffic by December 2023 or initially 2024, this has now been rescheduled to July 2024. Exciting news came on February 20, 2024 when Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi officially launched the USBRL project which includes the 48.1 km Banihal Sangaldan section. This would give a real boost to the tourism sector, bringing growth and promote stability. Aditya L1 Mission ISRO's Aditya L1 Mission aims to establish an Indian solar observatory stationed at Lagrangian Point L1. Its primary goal is to provide continuous observation and deepen our understanding of the sun's chromospheric and coronal dynamics. The mission is equipped with seven advanced payloads designed to study the photosphere, chromosphere and corona using a range of detectors for electromagnetic radiation, particles and magnetic fields. Developed at the UR Rao Satellite Center with key contributions from other ISRO facilities, the mission's scientific instruments come from esteemed Indian institutions such as the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, IIA, the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, IUCAA, and ISRO itself. Great Nicobar Development The project features an international container, transshipment terminal, a new Greenfield International Airport, township development, and a 450 MVA gas and solar based power plant, all spanning 16,610 hectares on the island. According to the Niti Aayog report, this proposed port will enable Greater Nicobar to engage in the regional and global maritime economy, becoming a key player in cargo transshipment. However, the project has faced significant criticism due to concerns about its potential negative impact on the area's rich biodiversity and the habitats of endangered species. Environmental and Social Impact Assessment ESIAS. India faces a complex challenge of balancing infrastructure development and economic development while maintaining an efficiency level without any compromise of social and environmental considerations. Recently, a group of experts highlighted how the Greater Nicobar Development Project can be harmful to the region's indigenous population. Let's have a closer look at the project's environmental assessment. The project consists of four projects, the ports, airport, power plant and township interlinked together. Development of the region should be such that the ecological resources are conserved and enhanced along with benefiting the current as well as its future immigrants and investors. Need for the project. The GNI has great potential for a well-rounded sustainable development project, especially with the limited connectivity of the GNI with the Indian mainland. A new airport is a prerequisite to improve connectivity. Moreover, the location provides an opportunity to capitalize on the exceptional tourism assets. Another is forging new diplomatic ties with other states and expanding footprints in the Indian Ocean regions. It serves as an economic opportunity to convert GNI into an economic and defense powerhouse. Despite the high financial cost of such projects, a new transshipment port at Great Nicobar Island, GNI, can be highly competitive due to the cost savings shippers can achieve by using feather ships to service ports around the Bay of Bengal. 
detailed analysis of the cost savings from new shipping routes utilizing the Great Nicobar port highlights its locational advantages over competing ports in the region for accessing ports between Chennai and Yangon. EIA Carbon Footprints Did you know that approximately 10% of CO2 emissions come from the construction site? This includes the manufacturing and transportation of materials as well as the CO2 produced during the building process. To tackle this issue and reduce the carbon footprints of construction, a multifaceted approach was adopted such as alternative cement. These cements contain different chemicals, making them less energy intensive to produce. For example, low carbon cements often include magnesia, which actually absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as it sets. Pretty cool, right? Here they take a step further. The terminal building will be constructed in compliance with ECBC standards, significantly reducing its carbon footprints. Plus, all the civil construction work will use materials specifically chosen to minimize embodied carbon emissions. Cost-benefit analysis Did you know that the economic value of the ecosystem services lost due to the forest diversion is measured by the net present value NPV of the diverted forest land? This is prescribed by the central government, MOEF and CC. In our case, the proposed forest area to be diverted mainly includes very dense eco-class 1 forests such as tropical wet evergreen forests, tropical semi-evergreen forests and tropical moist deciduous forests. It also includes eco-class 2 forests like littoral and swamp forests. According to the MOEF and CC, guidelines for diverting forest land for non-forestry purposes under the Forest Conservation Act 1980 and the guidelines for calculating NPV dated February 5, 2009, the area falls under Class 1 and Class 2 forest types. For very dense forests, the average value is Rs. 10,43,000 per hectare. So when you multiply this by 13,075 hectares of diverted land, the total NPV comes out to Rs. 1,36,000 lakh 372.25 lakhs. While this is significant, it is not very big for such a large project. Even if the project is considered economically viable, it is facing heavy criticism from environmentalists and anthropologists. Why? Because it involves destroying a primary forest and a rich biodiversity area, which possess a severe threat to the island ecology. Wildlife conservation researchers, anthropologists, scholars, civil society groups and the Congress party are all raising alarms about the potentially devastating impact on the Chopin, a particularly vulnerable tribal group, PVTG, of hunter-gatherers. With an estimated population of only a few hundreds, they live in a tribal reserve on the island. While most of these concerns do merit attention and have been adequately considered while planning these projects, all these concerns have been considered in development projects all over the world and a balance has been found between these concerns and the development goals. As we wrap up, it is clear that India's infrastructure projects are transforming the nation's economic landscape, promising significant growth and development. However, these ambitious ventures also come with environmental and social challenges that cannot be overlooked. The balance between economic progress and ecological preservation is delicate and essential. It is crucial to consider the long-term impacts on biodiversity, indigenous communities and natural resources. The criticisms from environmentalists, anthropologists and conservationalists highlight the need for sustainable development practices that respect both the environment and local populations. Thank you for watching. Stay connected for more such updates. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. See you next time.